What's up everybody, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog and this is gonna be my video regarding the Moto Vlog setup that I have. Many of you have asked how we get the clean audio that we do and how we do the things uh, that gives you the Onyx motorcycle experience from camera angles and all that. And we'll go over that real fast. And I know that there's this sign that says uh, Rabbit Hedgehog Motor Vlog State Farm. They don't actually sponsor me. That's just a sign that was made at the Denver International Motorcycle Show earlier this year. And State Farm's booth is the one that handled it. That's why the State Farm logo. However, whichever one of you stole my first sign, thank you. I got a better sign. It even has a little motorcycle on it. The first one didn't. It just said Rabbit Hedgehog Motor Vlogs. And somebody took off with it. Well, thanks for getting my name out there, but I got the better sign of the two. And once again, here's Tank. Tank with Law Tigers of Oklahoma and nationwide as well. Uh, sitting in, of course, as the guest star over to my left. So at any rate, we'll start with the helmet. My helmet is, there's two types. I have two Scorpion helmets. I have this one here. It was pretty much my primary uh, at this time, it is the RX, or the, excuse me, the EXO R320. Uh, this helmet um, is just a light weight, regular polycarbonate helmet. It does have a little chin curtain here, helps block some wind. Uh, it has replaced my original HJC CL17, the Captain America edition, as my primary go-to helmet whenever it comes to motovlogging. Uh, reason being is it has more room, it has the chin curtain, and it's a little bit tighter and less airy than the um, original HJC that I've been using for several years. Uh, another thing about it too is the way the chin curtains and stuff are is that you can hide some of the cords in those a little bit better uh, than you can on an HJC because the HJC you'd have sometimes it come out and you can hear it tapping and stuff and that was kind of annoying. So we use one of two cameras on this channel. Camera number one here is the GoPro Hero 8. Uh, we use these, they've just started coming into these, and we will also pair that with the GoPro Media, um, Media Mod as well. And that way we can record the live stream, which is what we practiced uh, on Monday the other day. So I apologize for that video being a little rough. I live in rural Oklahoma, so our internet is not the best when it comes to phone, but everything seemed to work pretty well once I got back into the city area uh, before starting to come back this way. And that was a good sign that we could possibly do this in the future at some of our dealer partners and stuff in the city. So look for live reviews, look for live responses pretty soon. Uh, but we would use this as the way to make this video stream. Uh, that and my cell phone, of course, but we won't go into that. So um, anyway, <laughs> whenever I'm on this, you'll notice the mount is different than what you will normally see on a GoPro. It's a switchblade type. And I like that mount a lot better. It actually comes from the Garmin Verb. I had a Verb XE several years ago and I used to use it for track and stuff like that because it had accelerometers, it had speed, GPS positioning, track positioning, it even did track times. It had, it was just a smart camera with very poor audio and, uh, and video quality unfortunately so I didn't really use it uh, outside of doing some of those other things so that way I could have lap times and track condition and all that fun stuff and see how fast I could get and all that good stuff that you just normally can't do. But they're very good mounts, so I bought a whole bunch more to put onto my teammates' helmets and my own helmet, and that way we get this field of view, which is right on the front. You'll notice how it is pointed to the back. It has just the standard mount from Garmin, is the big long arm there, and it has one one-way extension as well so you'll see that big long mount there is just the garmin by itself and then the little extension on the bottom of the gopro is how that connects in and that way you can get the angle that you need and i promise you you're going to need that angle because i did a video without that little uh, one-way extension and it came out where it was looking almost straight down at the machine you want it to actually be like that because you got to remember your head is down a smidge kind of like this when you're riding so the camera would be more upright whenever you have it at that angle and you're able to achieve that angle. So that's how we get the video off the front of the helmet is we put it right on the front using that Garmin um, mounting kit and it is their helmet mounting kit with a curved mount on it, not a flat mount. The next thing is that we use a purple panda lavalier mic inside. So this is the cable 
that comes out the back end, you'll notice there's an adapter there. You do have to have these adapters for certain things because if you don't, it will not record correctly. If you're using it straight to your cell phone, more than likely it'll work fine if you're using it as a capture device. But if you're using anything else that's a standard field recorder, you're going to need that adapter in there. Purple Panda itself is actually pretty small. It does have its little clip on here right now, but these clips are removable. This is one I just literally bought not too long ago. So it will come in a little package like this. It says Purple Panda on it, a little soft bag. It will have the little soft um, sponge type dead cat on it, but that is something you actually don't need. And it has this clip on it that you don't need. It's a very small microphone, pretty long um, cord there, so you have enough room to move it around. I prefer, uh, because if you guys remember my Challenger video, that poor thing had bad crackling audio, up, down, up, down, all that fun stuff, and that's because the wiring had got chewed up by being you know, moved around and pulled in and out of the helmet and stuff. So I just put this back in the neck curtain over here now, and then whenever it's time, I'll pull it out and plug it into an extension cord that can then go to one of our field recorders. So we actually have four different field recorders. We have a DRO5X and the original DRO5. And then we have two more field recorders that are both uh, Sony UX560s. So for the four of us, if we're all on the bike at the same time, we all have our own separate audio source. So whenever we go to set up, we all put our cameras on, we turn them all on, we will do a clap like that, and that way, or a few claps actually, and that way we can sync the audio to those waves uh, in, in production. And that way I can get clean audio from everybody because as everybody's noticed, even with a passenger, I have super clean audio, and that's because everybody's using their own field recorder, everybody's using their own Purple Panda, everybody is using a Cardo Pack Talk of some sort. And you'll see this one has the Pack Talk Slim. You can see that little apparatus there. And back here is going to be its um, actual main hardware unit. So we use Pack Talk Slim or Bold. Uh, my other helmet is equipped with a bold. This one's equipped with the slim, slim and the other teammates are equipped with slims. Those slims are all constant mesh. They're able to back in and out of um, you know frequency and stuff without losing other folks. And that's how we keep that clean audio between each other is we use them to talk to each other so that way we know that we're asking the questions, we know what each other are saying, but we get the super clean audio due to the separate audio source in the field recorder. So that's how we're actually doing that. We use these to talk, but those to record, and that way you guys can hear us very, very cleanly. So like I said, GoPro, it's just a simple GoPro Hero 8 or 7, media mod possibly on a few of those. Uh, most of the time it's going to be that separate audio source that I'm going to be using and generally I use a separate audio source. I use one of those two different field recorders and the reason I use the field recorders is because I actually have control of the gain and how it reacts versus a GoPro which you just stick it in there and it's what it thinks it is. So on a live video that's not a bad deal. I'm not looking for anything completely and utterly like perfect but when it comes to actually riding in the helmet I want to be able to cut some of that wind noise down and you can tune those um, to be able to cut those down and cut that wind noise out cut that that amplitude or, or that area out of it and that way it works better it's just it's just how it works for me so that's just kind of a basic on how my setup is done so it's not anything special. We're not a professional team, clearly. <laughs> but we are trying our best to do what we can, especially in motion. There's a lot of kinetics involved in moto vlogging. So we need gear that can handle um, the movement, that can handle the shocks, that can handle the vibrations, that can handle uh, four people at the same time whenever we get up and running fully to be able to do those videos and do it with clean audio and make it easy for you guys to hear us and entertaining for you guys to watch us instead of annoying and we try to avoid those incidents like with the Challenger and stuff but it happens to folks that just simply don't have you know 
a big budget. We, we just do what we can with what we got. So at any rate, I hope you found this informative. If you have any more questions about the setup, please let me know. I'll put um, everything, the links to where I got everything in the description below and that way you can find them as well, especially those Garmin mounts. You're going to like them a lot better than the GoPro mounts. I like that they're thinner. They don't they don't rivet as much. They, they, they just feel more solid the whole time. So I really like the way they work better. So I'll put that down there for sure. They cost the same as GoPro mounts. They use the same mounting. So you don't have to worry about, you know, adapting or anything like that. It's the same fork thing. So no big deal there. But I'll get you the Purple Panda and the different field recorders that we're using as well. And that way, if you guys want to set up a, a um, motor vlogging setup yourself, you can find it there. There. So at any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks. Catch you on the next ride. What's up, everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog. We once again want to thank you for watching our videos. Please like, share, subscribe today. And if you like what you see, mash that notification button so that way you get our latest videos and notifications live and on the spot. We also want to thank our dealership partners, Indian of Oklahoma City, House of Kawasaki, and Motive Cycle Works Moto Guzzi, who is also our motorcycle mechanic. We want to thank them for allowing us to ride their rides. We are not paid in by any way by any manufacturer or dealer. We just get to be mad men and women with opinions. We also want to reach out to our sponsors and thank them. We have Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. These motorcycle lawyers are mostly nationwide and can be reached 24-7 at lawtigers.com or one 868 208 We also want to thank our newest sponsor for gear and the things that you see us wearing, AGV Sport USA. They are out of agvsportusa.com in Flower Mound, Texas. We also want to thank Doug Crawford and AMS Oil for protecting our machines with the latest in lubrication technologies. He can be found at usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. And also for Derek Inlow and Associates Insurance Company, he can be found at 405-261-1010. Once again, everybody keep that shiny side up and we'll catch you on the next ride.